Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm trying my hand at master batching my oils. Backstory, sorry. <laughs> Backstory, I used to master batch my oils before I started this channel for, I did it for about a year. How I did it back then, I'll just use this. This was what I used. I had bought maybe six of these and I put all of my hard oils and butters in that ready to go and on my shelf. So then when it was time to do my soap, I would just throw that in the microwave, melt them, add my liquid oils and call it a day. A couple problems with that. Those really aren't microwavable. Oops, I thought they were. So like this one, I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but it's kind of modeled because the plastic started breaking down. <laughs> Dang it. The other problem I had with that was that that was for one batch of soap and I couldn't make any other soap with that other than that one size. So I've decided to go ahead and master batch all of my oils. I have recently changed my soap recipe and I am so happy with the suds, the lather, the feeling of my soap. I am so, so happy with the soap right now. And now I feel like it's a good time for me to master batch. I also have quite a few embeds to make that I just wanna be able to pull off a certain amount of oils, do my lye water. I master batch my lye water all the time anyway, 50-50. You know, I have eight covered bridges to make. I have 24 snowflakes to make, and I just wanna be able to pull off as I need the amount that I need. So guys, an issue for me with doing this is my environment in this basement. It is a balmy 68 degrees in here right now. Balmy, no wonder I'm sweating. It is hot in here. Normally, it runs between 61 to 65. It's pretty standard for this room, pretty much year round. That's pretty cold <laughs> to, have oils. I think I'm gonna to have to remelt this every time I wanna pull some oils off of it. So I thought I would just try it and see what it's gonna do in this environment and how easy is it gonna be for me to melt everything down. Uh, whether I leave it in my pot, I put it in a pitcher over here and try a heating pad. I just, I'm not sure how it's gonna work. I thought I would just share with you this little bit of a trial of my master batching. This is how I've been doing it. I have my scale here. I went ahead and weighed off my coconut oil. And I'm gonna put it in my large, large pot here. And then I'm gonna add my palm oil. I do use a sustainable palm oil. And I have these buckets here. I have 10 pound buckets on the either side of my table on a little like shelf thing that we, we built for it. And so I just have these buckets here more for transport. You know, I can carry these over and get my uh, measure out instead of dealing with a big bucket. So next is going to be my lard. Lard is a new uh, new addition to my soap. I started using it when I, I think it was on the soap, uh, soap Challenge Club. They have a slow moving recipe on there and it called for lard. And I learned that lard will slow your trace. I have struggled with my trace for a long, long time. And so I started using lard in my slow moving recipe and then I just started liking working with it so much that I moved it over into my normal recipe as well. I'm almost empty, but I'm ridiculous and I am going to scrape every single last bit of lard out of here. I do this with peanut butter. <laughs> I do this with mayonnaise. I'm going to do it with my lard. Another new ingredient for my soap is pump kernel flakes. And I I, this is one of these ingredients that I use just kind of on a whim and the soap turned out so well that I am sticking with my palm kernel flakes. I also use sustainable palm kernel flakes. 
it was important to me to use the sustainable and pay a little bit more for that. And it's really not that much more to search for and use the sustainable palm. But I'm gonna get these melted down and then I'll add my liquid uh, oils. I had to move the camera way up so you could even see the top of my pot. All right, those are melted and on a towel here, I'm gonna add my avocado oil and my castor oil. And now I'm gonna go get my olive oil, guys. I'll be right back. Yes, it is half an inch from the top of this pot. So here's what I have to do. I have two buckets that fit my 27 bar batch. These are the only two buckets I have that will actually fit all of the oils, all of the lye, the whole batch. I'm gonna stir this really well. And I have, I think it's like a two cup, a two cup like measuring device. I'm putting my oils in here for a full 27 bar batch. And I'm just gonna stir. Every five, five or so, I'll give a quick stir. I'm gonna tear this and I'm gonna do the same thing. Now I take my pitcher that I have been doing all my measuring in and I'm gonna uh, tear that. One more measuring picture here. Clearly, <laughs> this isn't for a long-term solution. This is for my heavy production, uh, just because I wouldn't want these laying around all the time. But here in my really busy season, so I have done this three times in two weeks. At this point, I don't have lids. I could buy a lid for this, and I may at some point if I continue to do this. But I'm going to, I'm going to take some cling wrap. I'm just going to cover so that they stay, you know, dust free and whatnot. They're still a little warm. I'm not going to seal them and cause like a bunch of condensation. But I am just going to leave these to cool. Let me explain what I did here. All right, so two big batches that I can make, and then this is one nine bar batch, and this is everything that's left over. I can make two smaller batches, the nine bar batches, I could split this and make two. I can, I have a couple soaps that's gonna be a little odd size. I have my covered bridges still to make. I'm gonna need some odd sizes for that, so I've been pulling this to make my covered bridge or my embeds or different things that I'm doing for different soaps. But I think normally if I was doing this without needing all of that, I would probably just do um, three of my regular nine bar batches and that way I can just pull those and, and make those on the fly. All right guys, I'm gonna bring you back tomorrow so you can see what these look like in a room that is 68. Earlier it was 63 and I turned the vent down because it was cold. I think I'm going to have to turn the vent back up. I brought the camera up quickly before I bring you back down. I wanted to show you what I have here. This is a good one to show you. So that is separated, which is pretty typical, I would imagine. So it does stir quite nicely and mixes in quite nicely. But the problem with this is that big pan to do to do the bulk size that I actually did, which is about 310 ounces or 318 ounces of oils. I just don't feel like I could get to the bottom of that and get it stirred in well enough to then pull off any for my soap making. 
whereas this feels very doable. Now this needs to be heated up. I have tried a heating pad under this. It doesn't work for me. What I do at this point is I get a little pitcher. I pour eh, about that much. I'm gonna get this in the microwave, heat this up, usually around 120 or 130, and then pour it in here and that'll kind of even out this uh, temperature. These, my nine bar batches, or this one I guess, I can just pop this in the microwave until it's ready to go. So these are all going on my back counter and let's make a quick batch of soap. All right, two minutes in the microwave. Let's see where we're at. 132. See if that's going to be enough. That's 88. Pretty perfect. Let's talk about the design we're going to do today. So one of my favorite fragrances is Aveda's Rosemary and Mint. Actually, the Confixer hair gel is probably my favorite, but you can't find a dupe of that. But you can find a duplicate of Rosemary Mint. I get this from Aztec. This isn't one of the colors that I've been trying to get off my shelf. I've been talking a lot about that, but I just really want to try the sea glass green. I've tried it before, but I really want to make it the star of the, of the soap. So I'm going to pour some off for this, a fair amount because it's just going to be white and this green. And I think I'm going to do a little piping on the top. This is my master batching lye. It's actually smaller than I meant to buy. Uh, but it's working for now. I have 50% water and 50% lye. I kind of shake it up a little bit. So how I do that is I put my water in here first. I dissolve my sugar and my citric acid. Is Those are two things that I've started adding to every, pretty much every soap. And then I add my lye solution on top of that. And then I, it, that will heat it back up. It was back up to 140 when I added my lye solution. So then it has to cool again, but it doesn't get as hot as a fresh, a fresh batch of lye, which is nice. This is my new TD little, it's very, very thick. How did I do this? One to one, I think. Probably, maybe it was two to one. Probably needed a little bit more oil. Pretty thick. So I'm gonna have to blend it. But that bottle made such a mess. TD got all over my hands all the time. It always kind of leaked around the cap. I thought, ah, I'm just gonna do it this way. I'm thinking about eight or eight or nine ounces for my of each color. I did 17 ounces when I did my chocolate one, and that was close. I'm not trusting myself. That's 11 ounces, and that doesn't look like very much. I'm gonna weigh off another 11 ounces on my green. 22 ounces, let's see what, what happens. This is really behaving well. It's, it's got viscosity, but it's not even at a trace yet. And I think I would just wanna do a simple in the pot swirl, guys. I like that to be a bit thicker. So I'm just going to stir this and come back when it's time to pour. It is finally at a bit of a trace. <laughs> it's gonna take forever for me to pipe. <laughs> All right, a quick in the pot swirl, guys. I'm trying to make this video a quick one since it's more about my master batching than this soap. It's so pretty loose, but I'm just going to keep stirring for the next forever and we'll come back and pipe. Guys, it has been two and a half hours two and a half hours look at that i don't think it's ready it is almost eight o'clock it is almost eight o'clock my back is killing me <laughs> oh my goodness i'm half tempted to just do it I know it's not quite ready though. Look at that. Oh, I'll be back 30 minutes later. I don't know that they're ready yet, but I'm done waiting. So I'm just gonna go for it guys.
say too much. <laughs> Let me see if I can build up this without ruining my design. Otherwise, I'll just put it in a sample. Guys, it's been almost a month probably since I started this little bit of a master batching uh, series with you. Let's look at the soap I made for you guys while master batching really quickly just to get it out of the way. I think this is cute. I love my piping. What do you guys think? I'm really, really pleased with my piping, guys. I thought that was good. I love <laughs> anything of Veda. Anything Aveda scented, I'm all in. Rosemary Mint is a good one. It's very clean and minty and, but not just candy. It's not a sweet mint at all. So it's a good one and I love my piping. So there's, there's that done. Let's talk about the master. I have probably made over 30 batches of soap since July 1st. I have been just down here wearing myself out making soap but i will say having those oils to pull from really did help i really felt like even though i had i felt like i needed to separate them out and that that worked well i have i mean i have this on my back counter waiting for me to make tomorrow i have another smaller one over there waiting for me to make my last two soaps for quite a while very very convenient long term or year long scenarios i'm not sure that i'll do this for all the time and the only reason i say that is because i don't really have room to have different jugs along my back counter I don't have room for those separate jugs anywhere else in my room. High production time frame like this summer, perfect. I've done this system four times in the last three weeks. That's a lot for me. One of the things I like about doing it too is it, it uses up my big bottles and that I can move those off my out of my shelf. And you guys know how I love to like use up a bottle. It doesn't matter what oil or what bottle, fragrance oils, I love using them up. <laughs> That's nice. It's like almost every time I get rid of a big jug of oil. <laughs> I wish I could find a system where I could do more than 300 ounces at a time and house that oil somewhere in a way that I could pull from it in such a cold environment. And I just don't even know if I have room. Even if I found something to hold that much oil in, I don't know that I have much that much room. Uh, I know they make those like heated blankets for pails maybe, maybe something like that. I'm not gonna spend several hundred dollars though on something like that. I'm just not at this point in my life. Uh, so I'm not exactly sure, guys. If you have any thoughts, let me know. Definitely going to be doing this, though, anytime I'm having a high production uh, little span of time. I'm all in on this. This was so helpful. I really like doing my 50-50 life solution. Uh, that's I have considered going ahead and doing my full water with my citric acid and my sugar and my lye water and mixing that up and holding and and doing all of that i may do that from this point forward because just mixing the citric acid and the sugar is just such a pain in the butt and i'm a patron of lisa at i dream and soap and she talked about how she master batches her lye solution with her sugar solution that she makes I may try that. I don't know if, if it's bad to put citric acid. I almost have to put citric acid in first. I mean, that doesn't make it go bad, does it? If I add my citric acid to my lye solution and hold it for a while? Let me know if you know, okay? Guys, thanks for watching. If you have any tips or tricks for me and how I can improve upon this, please let me know. Thank you so much for your time and watching my video. I do appreciate you guys so, so much. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.